all be bliss But every wound is treatable We won't go under, we're gonna be all right Don't see how we can miss Our team is To a special edition of Art Speak called How Are We Doing? A chance for us to check in with people around and about to see how they're coping with social distancing, working from home, and what have you. We've got a group of guests today in this hour, our first being Gail Burns, who is the Marketing and Public Relations Director for Wham! Theater Company, and her appearance today is made possible by her office manager, Alice. Gail Burns has been, as she says on Facebook, working from home since 2012. Good morning, Gail. Good morning, Mark. Very cheerful intro music there. I appreciate it. Uh, now, um, I understand that Alice has given you special permission to talk with us this morning on radio and TV. Yes, and she's even left me alone, which is amazing, so that she wouldn't chime in. Well, you're one of the first people that I know who's been working from home for almost a decade. I started working from home around this in 2009, actually, um, when I left working at WFCR. And I had a public relations company, and I was allowed to work at home, except my day was full of meetings and travel. Now, uh, working for home for me is totally working from home, except coming into the studio here to do occasional radio pieces. Um, what made you choose to work at home? Well, it wasn't a choice. I became physically disabled, and I couldn't work out in the world. Um, And uh, obviously, one couldn't go completely stir-crazy. It wasn't my mind that was disabled. It was my hip. And so, obviously, I I found ways to work and be a productive member of my community from home. Now, you do the marketing and the PR for WAM Theater, but also uh, publish the Berkshire on stage, uh, which unfortunately isn't publishing now because there's no theater really to report about. Yes, I miss it. Yes, I, I miss it, too. I realize that I have not covered a show in over a month, and for the near foreseeable future, there's nothing on the schedules until maybe the end of May, beginning of June, if those schedules don't change. Right, right. It, for, for us theater lovers, um, and, and it's not just loving the theater, it's supporting the theater. That, that's what critics do. Um, this is a very, it's a very hard time. Um, the only people it's harder for are the artists. Exactly. Um, when you work at home, do you have a, a designated office space or do you work wherever you want? Um, I have a designated office space and um, a space in the living room. And a lot of times I'm in the living room, you know, the family's coming and going. I live in a big bustling household. I don't live alone. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's nice to have the people in, and the society. But right now I'm in my office, which is lovely. Do you, do you find it difficult to uh, have the discipline to work, let's say, nine to five? Or does the self-discipline come easy to you? Self-discipline has always come easily to me. I'm, in fact, I prefer to do something because I think it needs to be done than because somebody tells me to do it. So, yes, I'm a real self-starter. And um, what technology do you use to do your meetings and, and what have you? Um, a lot of times just phone, just conference calls, but more and more now Google Hangouts and Zoom because you know, now everybody's at home and everybody wants in on the, on the action, um, which is great. It's, it's lots of fun to see people. Now, you, you, we mentioned earlier that you're involved with Wham! Theater, and of course they can't perform right now, but they're doing a streaming uh, program uh, of one of their plays called Pipeline. Uh, is it, will there be more online things coming from Wham? I hope so. I mean, obviously all theater companies now are in the business of changing gears and thinking about how we can... Uh, serve our artists and our audiences um, in new ways. And one way, of course, is streaming. Now, you you know, and anybody who's been to the theater, the live theater, knows that there's an announcement before the curtain goes up that says, we're copying of this is strictly prohibited by copyright laws. So obviously, 
a lot a lot has had to change very quickly with equity with the the uh, publishers that hold the rights to the plays with the playwrights themselves to allow for this kind of streaming but i'm i'm really excited it's actually our we co-produced pipeline with the nora at central square theater in cambridge and it's our cambridge run that was um uh, it was supposed to run march 5th through 29th and we had to close on the on the 15th we were actually the last live show running in boston um which is an amazing thing um so anyway, the, the live stream was made possible by Central Square Theater and by Cambridge Community Television. But I'm thrilled that it's happened. So it, it's not only available, um, and there's information on the Wham Theater website, which is yeah. whamtheater.com. And, right. But um, it, it, it support the streaming. There's a charge to stream it, but th- does that support Wham Theater specifically? No. Uh, I believe, and again, this was through Central Square Theater, so I'm not completely expert on this, but um, it's, it's only $10 to stream it, by the way, which is so much less than what one pays for a seat in a theater theater. On the other hand, you know, a theater holds 150, 500, streaming thousands of people can watch. So it's a $10 uh, charge to stream. You can obviously give more than that if you'd like to support the artists above $20. Uh, goes directly to a fund. Central Square Theater is uh, has started for their artists, so it's not Wham artists; it's Central Square artists. But we're happy to uh, to help them. But that initial ten dollars, I believe, goes to pay for the rights and the playwright and all the things that uh, is normally folded into uh, a ticket cost. With, since most of your clients are arts related, have you had more leisure time now that they've all shuttered for the near <laughs> future? As you can tell from that, ha, huh? no, I'm um, actually, most of my clients aren't arts related. I, I do WAM. WAM is my primary uh, job, and I, I've been with WAM. I'm actually the longest tenured uh, employee, except for our founder, Kristen Benjenhoven. Um, I do WAM. I do uh, Berkshire on Stage and the Berkshire Theatre Critics Association page as a volunteer. Uh, my other work jobs, I work from the Williamstown Community Chest, the Williamstown Historical Museum, um, actually a neighborhood organization out in San Francisco, uh, and Allison Larkin Presents, which is an audio book uh, presenting a company here in the Berkshires. So, so you, yeah, and everybody, everybody suddenly needs to be online in ways they weren't before. I am swamped with work. I am too, actually. Um, yep. One of my clients is the Capital Steps, and they, yep. of course, have suspended performances not only in Washington, D.C., but uh, coast to coast. And I'm spending a lot of time building social media to announce the new dates that these postponed performances will take place. So m- my workload is as heavy as it's always been. But one exactly. of the nice one of the nice things is that I need to get outside every day since I'm not running to Starbucks or running off to a meeting. So I'm walking more and I'm also streaming more. I miss so many shows and television programs because of my work job. Now I have the time to watch them. Right. Well, actually, I don't because it was you know as I said I've been doing this since uh, 2012. So I've already got a rhythm to my day that never did include a lot of a lot of streaming content. Um, in fact, I'm working to find time to fit Pipeline in. <laughs> I've got to do it. By the way, the, the streaming option on Pipeline ends this uh, midnight this coming Sunday, April 5th. So if you want to stream it, do it now. Okay. That, well, that's, that's really um, a good thing to know. Um, in terms of Wham!, they actually didn't have any performances at the moment, but they had some events that were kicking off later in the spring and summer. Um, as they look long-term, do you think that the season will proceed or are they being uh, uh, cautiously optimistic as one would put it our main stage production is traditionally in the fall so we've got um our our production will be row by lisa loomer and that's going to be running late september into uh, early october i should remember those dates and i'm forgetting them but you can find them on our website um and then we were also having a fresh takes play reading of the, the Thanksgiving play around Thanksgiving. So those are far enough off that we're proceeding as if they may happen. Our suffrage project, which was going to be the work of our various ensembles, um, our devising ensembles, that was supposed to happen in June. So obviously we would be uh, starting now 
and that is not going to be starting now. It's not going to take the form of a public performance, but we will find ways, again, to stream that because that's our own devised um, content. We don't need any rights or permissions to to do that. So we're looking forward to doing that um, around Labor Day, I think. That sounds terrific. Um, Before we run, do you have any advice to somebody who's working at home or working from home for the very first time as you being an old timer at the work from home biz? (laughs) Definitely um, personal grooming. Get up, shower, dress, wash your hair, do everything like you normally did. Do not bag around in your pajamas all the day. Feel like a professional working person. Um, Also, you know, as I said, I work in a very bustling uh, household. If If that's the case for you, carve out a space, even if it's just a chair, where when you're there, nobody can bother you. You know, your own cone of silence, remember, from... Uh, get smart. That really ages me. Um, I think those are the two most important things. And keep in touch with people. You can't work in a vacuum. It's impossible. How do you get, uh, do you take time during the day just to email somebody or t- text them just to make sure they're doing okay? Yes, I have. I have uh, friends. I have lots of friends. I'm very blessed. And um, I have people that I regularly call, email, um, even now we're having outdoor visits now that it's getting warm enough, even if we're sitting there in our jacket and gloves, you know, we sit six or more feet apart out in the yard and we can have a, a visit. Um, and those things are all very important to me. I believe that one of the most important things that we can do is to continue to socialize through electronically or phone or, like you say, visits that are farther than six feet. I got a call on Sunday from one of my colleagues who's a part-timer who's been working for me for oh, three or four years. And he just called to check in and see how things were going. And we had this nice long chat. And I think sometimes when we're out and about and running around like crazy, we forget about people that are important to us. And to be able to reach out to them, especially those that are homebound and lonely, uh, can make a big difference for all people involved. Absolutely. And we do have more time for that. I would suggest that instead of streaming you know, all the episodes of something, you take the time of one episode, an hour, a half hour, whatever, and call people. Well, um, I totally, totally agree. Gail Burns, uh, PR and marketing manager at Wham Theater and uh, Berkshire Theater Critics and Berkshire On Stage. Thank you so much for joining us today on this special program. And please thank Alice for allowing you to um, change her schedule to be with us. Yeah, she'll never forgive you, but but I'll I'll pass on your thanks. Thank Have you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Gail. The next person we'll be chatting with this morning is an actor, director, and musician who's a frequent guest on our program, James Barry, and you've heard him here on Arts Beat before, with oftentimes with his wife, the actor Tara Franklin. James, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you, sir? I am doing just fine. Um, you had a really busy spring schedule um, ahead of you, as we had talked about when you and Tower were here for our Arts Beat Valentine's Day special. A lot of that, I assume, has changed. So what's on your schedule at this point? Well, it's all still up in the air. You know, I think all of the theaters in the region and, well, all the theaters everywhere are are trying to examine, um, you know, what the possibilities are, Um, you know, perhaps a truncated season. Um, So we really, we really don't know. Uh, It's a lot of question marks, but you know, the, the likelihood of me beginning rehearsals in May, uh, for uh, Switzerland uh, seems unlikely, um, but you know, I mean, who who can say? Um, you know, casting is completely put on hold. No, you know, we're not <laughs> holding auditions of any sort, um, so it is quite difficult. And in the meantime, I, I had just been waiting tables at uh, Meze and the airport rooms in Williamstown and North Adams, respectively. And uh, <laughs> it was a bad time to have that for, <laughs> for a between-theater gig job. So 
it's it's a tough time. We're very lucky, though. Everybody's healthy. Uh, we're we're here. We're we're feeling all right. Uh, Tara is actually teaching. This is her first virtual class acting class at Smith. She's teaching it upstairs right now. So um, you know, we're we're finding ways. Um, I've been uh, taking song requests online um, and uh, donating uh, the money people give me for those to directrelief.org. So that's been a a project that makes me feel sort of vital and meaningful as an artist right now. So, not knowing, I'm enjoying that. Yeah, not knowing if you're going to direct uh, Switzerland. I guess you're going to rehearsals in May. How do you prepare to direct something that may go into rehearsals in May and may not? Are you still prepping it, talking with designers, or is it totally on hold? It it seems to be on hold, though. I would imagine I will be talking to designers soon. Um, you know, there again, just because it it's possible that we could we could push the start date back. You know, I'm there are so many variables, um, but I, I have not spoken to designers yet. Um, though I know who they are, and I'm I hope I get to work with them because the design team is phenomenal. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I would love to get talking with them, and I, you know, I'm still reading the play and thinking about it all the time, and uh, reading the works of Patricia Highsmith and trying to get my head in her very scary head, and um, so you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, it's it's hard because I don't because it's it's scary to invest your your heart and, and soul into something <laughs> that may not come to fruition, but. You know what else am I going to do? It's still worth it. I'm still learning things. I'm still it's still uh, the joy and thrill of discovery and exploration. Throwing yourself headlong into projects like this, it's you know that's the that's the cool part. You know whether or not we we get to share that work with uh, an audience this summer. You know who can say? But um, I have I have faith that it's it's whatever we're doing, working on it is is worth it on some level and. Um, you know, the, the relationships forged between me and the designers and the, the things we're thinking about and talking about will, can only help you know, future projects or perhaps we'll just get to put the show on at a later date. You yeah, know, James, um, Broadway shuttered completely and then within a matter of days, every theater company in the country closed down, uh, putting hundreds if not thousands of actors out of work. I've noticed on uh, some of the website that the union that protects actors, Actors' Equity, has offered a lot of resources to people that are out of work. Um, it's a, And it's an uncertain time. It's certainly, in the case of you and Tara, uh, Tara has teaching work uh, beyond acting, and you have songwriting work. But it must have been a frightening experience to find out that all of a sudden, not only you, but all of your colleagues are sitting at home. Yeah, it's, it's very, very odd. Um, it's, uh, it's a very, very strange time. And, um, you know, it's funny, I was talking to a friend about this, that uh, right before the coronavirus outbreak, the sort of overriding sentiment of a lot of artists that I was close with was, oh, man, we got to get off of our devices and just get stop looking at your phone, stop looking at your computer, get out and live. You know, we're missing all these real world experiences. And now we're now we're like, oh, I can't wait to have a virtual happy hour with everyone on Zoom and Facebook and FaceTime. <laughs> you know? It certainly so, has changed so, the way we communicate. Yes, it has. But, you know, it's um, I think that, uh, you know, performing artists, have always been pretty resilient stock. And I, I, you know, I, I see people coming up with all kinds of creative projects and alternatives right now. uh, My friend, Jake Oliver, he's, uh, he's spearheading this idea called uh, make it together, which is a beautiful sort of double entendre. So we're going to have children will be submitting three page scripts and actors and directors are going to be producing these short films. And we're just, going to share them with each other it's not for money it's just for the joy of creation um so you know we'll make it together and we'll make it together now (laughs) you're putting your music out online um and yeah you you mentioned that um how long will you be doing it and how many songs are you going to put out there well that's a great question right now what i'm doing is i'm taking requests for 
twenty dollars and I'm giving ten of that to a mutually agreed upon charity that's helping people during this time. I've been doing um, uh, direct relief, uh, but I'm open to any charity anyone who's making a request has in mind. Um, so I just started doing this particular project as a as a as a benefit. I've been playing just for the love and joy of it since this whole thing started, but I've decided to, you know, take it to to a, a level of, of of activism and donation. So um, I have right now I've completed the first twenty dollar request, and I very quickly in the last twenty four hours I've gotten nine more so uh i have my work cut out for me this week um how can people if if they want to if they want a james barry song how do they find it well you can find me on instagram my handle is james barry loves you um i also have a james barry uh entertainer artist page on facebook um and uh and that's it. So you can find me on social media or you can email me at james.a.barry at gmail.com if uh, you're not on social media. And uh, we can get the ball rolling from there. I, I tend to I'll post the video of me performing your request and then I will uh, email you the YouTube link to that video so you can do whatever you want with it. And I will also email you a copy of the receipt of the $10 donation to the charity so you know where the funds went. So is it all kinds of musical genres or is it a specific, do you get to, do you choose the music or when you say requests, do you give them a list of, of songs or is it anything? Well, most people have had a specific song in mind, and I, I will quite often know that song and brush up on it, but I have been sent to the books to learn a song that I either hadn't heard before or was, you know, unfamiliar with. So I'm, I'm open to anything, and this is, this is part of the thing. I can't, I can't uh, I'm taking the freedom and liberty to arrange it as I, as I wish to, you know, the instruments I have and playing to my strengths, um, or if the song strikes me in a particular mood. Um, but um, like my brother, for example, requested a Bjork song called Hyper Ballad, which is um, a, a very synthesized uh, piece of electronic music. And I just decided to do it with a droning harmonium. Uh, and it came out really well. Uh, so I was really excited about that. So in other words, but, um, if I asked you uh, to do Sondheim or something uh, out, not in your usual genre, for, yeah. for for the twenty bucks, you would do it, and then ten dollars of it would go to whatever charity you and I agreed upon. That's correct. That is just an incredible thing. Now, you since you and Tara are both home at the same time with your kid and the dogs, mm -hmm. which isn't a, a, <laughs> generally doesn't happen. Do you think there's any? Uh, possibility that Sam Bakes will go back into business to get us through social distancing and self-quarantining? Because those butter cookies that Tara brought when <laughs> you guys were last here in the studio were just absolutely fantastic. Well, I'm so glad you enjoyed them, uh, Mark. I Well, we have certainly been baking. Whether or not we decide to take a professional turn with it with people's you know, health concerns with sharing things right now, but we, you know, we can put on hair nets and gloves and get it going. Sam and I made a, a huge batch of peanut butter chocolate chip cookies yesterday, and I've been making bread, and I made bagels from scratch for the first time last week, and it was really exciting. So we're, we're, we're cooking our way through this pandemic. So James Barry bagels could become something in, in the near future. How did the batch turn <laughs> out? They turned out phenomenal. I'm, I'm right now. I'm out of active dry yeast. So <laughs> if I can find some more of that at any grocery store, I will buy some. But uh, <laughs> right now, the baking's a little bit on hold. But I think we're going to place a big order with uh, Hillcrest, the wholesaler that um, Tara buys her her cookie supplies from uh, for the holiday baking. So, what is your advice to people who are? at home for the first time. You guys don't get a chance to be at home very often, so I assume for you there's a little bit of novelty to it, but what would you recommend to other people that are um, social quarantining and uh, have to be at home or working from home? Wow, that's, I mean, everybody has, has, 
has different personalities and everybody's processing this differently. I, I can only speak to what's been feeling good and healthy for me, but um, I have I have definitely decided to commit myself to more exercise. I've been pushing myself on on runs outside, weather permitting. Uh, my personal goal: I'm going to try and hit a uh, hundred miles in the month of April. That's uh, so that's been good for my brain and good for my body, and I feel like I'm you know, being extra, <laughs> extra strong in my, in my cardio and respiratory system to fight this thing. I don't know. It's a, who knows, but, um, I've been trying to do yoga. I've been trying to read more, not drink too much, you know, just sort of common sense stuff that ends up, you know, manifesting itself in my life in positive ways. So listening to a lot of music, playing a lot of music, you know, trying to get through all those bucket list novels I always told myself I'd read. So Moby Dick is staring at me on the shelf right now. I'm going to get to you. I'm going to do it. <laughs> this is the time. That's great. James, we're out of time. I want to thank you for joining us this morning. My best to Tara Franklin. And uh, I hope that when the social distancing and quarantine lifts later on this spring or summer, that you and Tara are going to come back in the studio and do another art speech. Uh, it would always, it will always be our pleasure. We'll jump at the chance to join you anytime. Thanks for joining us. You are listening to a special version of Arts Beat called uh, How We're Doing, which is talking with people about how they're coping with the COVID-19 crisis, how they're making changes in their lifestyles. Peter Coles is our chief engineer. We're broadcasting from 89.5 FM WSKB and Westfield Community Programming Channel 15 at Westfield Technical Academy Studio 120. We'll be right back after we acknowledge the underwriters that make community broadcasting possible on both of these venues. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Westfield Bank. For more than 160 years, Westfield Bank has been an important community presence and commercial leader in the Pioneer Valley. With convenient full banking services in Westfield, West Springfield, East Longmeadow, Agawam, Feeding Hills, Springfield, Southwick, as well as Enfield and Granby, Connecticut, Visit us on the web at westfieldbank.org. Support for Community Radio on WSKB is provided by Betts Plumbing and Heating Supply Company, an independent, family-owned wholesaler serving Westfield for over 50 years, specializing in plumbing, heating, and industrial piping supplies. On the web at bettsplumbing.com or at 14 Coleman Avenue, in Westfield. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Dunkin' Donut Shops of Westfield and the Sardinia family. It's nice to know that even as the world changes, Dunkin' Coffee remains the same at seven convenient locations throughout Westfield. This is Ken Stomsky from Ken's Den on WCPC 15 and 89.5 FM, Tuesdays 8 to 10. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Live from Studio 120 at Westfield Technical Academy, this is WCPC Channel 15 at 89.5 FM, WSKB Westfield. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Mark Auerbach, your Arts Beat host, and today we're doing a special program called How Are We Doing? Uh, it's a program where we're chatting with various people about how they're coping with the COVID-19 changes to their work schedules and their lifestyles and all of that. And we're talking not only with people that uh, generally would appear on an Arts Beat program, but also some of my colleagues who work from home who can offer and dispense a lot of good advice. Our next guest this morning is Mimi Berry, and Mimi Berry has worked from home for a long time. She works for Univision in New York and New Jersey, and she telecommutes from Western Massachusetts. Good morning, Mimi. Good morning. How are you, Mark? I'm great. How are you doing? I am well, thank you. Mimi, you you so have been tele, uh, telecommuting for years, right? I have. I um, started working with Univision um, in the city with them, oh my gosh, like 20 plus years ago. I won't age myself too much. Um, and then when I moved up here, I continued working with them and started te telecommuting. So it's been um, just about 18 to 19 years I've been 
doing it from home, working with them from home. When you started doing it from home, was that unique? Were you kind of like the un- oh, yeah. unusual employee? Yeah, it, it was. Um, so when I first started, they had me go part time just to see if we could even make it work. And they would hand me projects and I would do them and send them back in. And then within a year, it was there was so much work to be done. They put me on full time. And um, I have been doing it ever since. The hardest part, I think, was really, you know, we have a Tuesday morning meeting. So I would be calling in and and doing my portion of the meeting over the phone. But now it's they're so used to it. It's the norm for me. But it's very different for everybody who who is who's used to going into the office and and now having to do it from home. When you when, when you went and uh, and started telecommuting, you had a couple of small kids at the time. And did you set up a special office in your house, or did you just do it from the kitchen table or the living room? Yeah. So our situation was kind of unique. When I first started, um, I have. I had a little nook I went into upstairs because my husband was actually working from home as well for a portion of time. So he would take a downstairs room and work out of there, and I would work out of the little nook upstairs. And I would tell my office that I'm going to work from, you know, 9 to 2, 9 to, depending on when I had to go get the kids and what I had to do. I said, that's in the bulk of the time. I said, but when I can get in afterwards, I'll do that, you know, once I get them home or to after school activities or something. And then as my husband got out of the, you know, Patrick got out of the house and started working out of the house, I took over his office. And now um, we, we have it down. My kids know if, if the hand is up, you don't talk to mom because she's in the middle of a meeting or something. Or if the door is closed, you know, don't, don't open it up because I'm trying to present something. Or otherwise, you know, come on in and sit down. And it's sort of like having someone walk in your office. You know, when you're when you're at work, it's, you know, in an office building, and somebody walks in and wants to have a conversation, that's all fine too. Um, what do, What do you do in terms of technology? What works best for you? So um, for me, I the company has provided me a laptop as well as um, one monitor, and you know that was nice. And and I we have um, we use Whip City Fiber. It comes in here, which I highly recommend if anyone's working from home because it's it's just fast internet that is really useful. Um, and then the company has a VPN, which is a secure internet connection in which I go into their internet every day and I can get all my files and I can securely, you know, work on things over it. It does, a lot of times the easier way for me to do things is to grab a file from, you know, say a company server, download it onto my laptop and then work on it and then go back in and, and set, you know, send it back to somebody because sometimes when you're working on a VPN, it can be a little slow if everybody's working on it. Um, but, you know, for the most part, it's, it's fairly seamless for me. I, you know, I, I actually acquired another monitor. So if I really wanted to, I could have three monitors going, but that gets a little overwhelming. That probably so, would be, um, um, can, in yeah, terms of meeting with your clients, can you do FaceTime or Zoom? Is there a particular format that you like to use? So this is kind of funny because for the longest time, if, um, since I was one of the few people at the company, you know, the pretty big company that was working from home, we would just do, um, you know, they would just, we would use WebEx. They might have a presentation going on the WebEx, but they just have me call in and I would present over the phone. So I'm very used to presenting over the phone. Um, but since this new environment we're in, um, the company has now decided to try Microsoft Teams, which if anybody has Microsoft products is, is one of the products they offer. And, it, you know, you can use video chat and you can do, um, do, instead of talking over a phone line, you can just talk over the computer line. And um, it's, it's now become what the company really wants to go to because they feel they need to see people's faces. So for me, it's kind of funny. It's a little different. It's a little different environment I'm working in because now everybody wants to see our faces. And, you know, before nobody, nobody asked to see my face before when it was just me at home. They were perfectly fine with just my voice. So, um, so there's some options out there for people. Um, I do like Microsoft Team because you can save files back and forth to everybody. It's, it's a little bit more um, business oriented. But I've also done Zoom calls with some of my friends, and that's a great way to do it as well. 
Yeah, I, I, I'm not used to I'm not used to doing FaceTime. I do Google Hangouts um, quite a bit, but uh, Zoom and FaceTime. I realize that one of the reasons that I do primarily radio is I have a face for radio, and when I see how uh, my laptop distorts what I'm looking like, I think I'm in social. I'm kind of like self quarantine. Where's yeah. the hairstylist? Where's the makeup people and stuff like that? So I, I get very self conscious. Um, I agree with you. I think it's a little overwhelming. We just had a call. Um, the good part is in this environment right now, everybody's at home. And, and so I think a lot of, you know, in our company, we made a big thing of you don't need to get dressed up for the sales meeting call if it's just an internal call. But, you know, we're not looking to see somebody also sitting on their bed in their pajamas either, you know. So there's a fine, there's a, a kind of a fine line of what you want to look like from about the waist up when you do one of those calls. Exactly, exactly. I, I try to change T-shirts, put, uh, you know, move the laptop yeah, exactly. to, to a nice backdrop so they see something other than the same bookcase and the same wall all the time. Right, um, and some of these... Some of these things actually offer you can blur your background. So if you don't want people seeing the mess behind you, you can, you know, I know in Microsoft Teams you can blur your background, but I, I try to keep my office somewhat neat so I don't have to do that. <laughs> yeah, now, I, I, one, of, one of your daughters, uh, school ended early for her and she's home. Um, has that changed your daily routine? Um, she, yeah, she's, she's home now. She just started up with her online classes, um, yesterday and it, you know, just for the most part, because I'm so, I was so used to, and they're so used to having me work out of the house. It hasn't dramatically changed my routine. I can see that being, I wear a couple people who work for me who have young kids and it has dramatically changed their routines. Um, but so for her, it's, um, it's a little, like, I, you know, I hear her, and she gets up, and she's making breakfast, and I hear her in the kitchen, so it's a little strange for me to all of a sudden have somebody back in the house besides the dog wandering around. Um, but we have we so far have a nice, happy medium. I think if they um, decide to send Patrick home and have him work out of the house, that media, that might be a little, you know, add some mayhem to the situation, but we'll have to see. Yeah, because he'd be producing that Westfield concert series out of your living room, and uh, yes, Mass and Appeal would be, would be uh, in the kitchen. <laughs> in the kitchen, that's I don't I don't not sure I'm ready for that, and I don't think Courtney's ready for that either. As she is sitting there trying to you know do her classes online in the kitchen. So it is is so, that fr- is that frustrating for her? As, or I mean, I guess it's oh, the second day. Yep. Well, but she's used to taking online classes. She's done a few in the summer and done some in a winter term. So it's not so much the online classes, although now doing six of them online is a lot. And part of it, you know, that if you think about a 20-year-old's perspective, you're, you're, one of the reasons you go to college is for the social interaction that you have with everybody. Yeah, you go to class and you do all your classwork and you, you're trying to get your degree and all of that. You do all of those things. But, you know, part of a big part of it is is your you come home to your apartment or your dorm room or wherever and your friends are on the hall and you get to go eat together and have fun together. And all that's gone now. And that's a very difficult adjustment, I think, for her and for anybody who's in college. I think it's, it's very hard for them to come back and sit here and go, well, now I'm just looking at you. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I don't I, have I'm my just... friends. I don't know for you, but for me, even though I'm used to working at home and do it all the time, I miss, you know, running out and doing errands. And I would always stop oh, yeah. like at Starbucks and see friends and, you know, sit down and have a cup of coffee with somebody. I'm a social animal. And of course, Starbucks is closed and you don't want to be hanging out at Big Y or uh, CVS. So I'm, I'm missing an element of my social that I was part of my working at home. So I try to take those little breaks and call friends that I don't get a chance to speak with. Um, do you find yourself a little bit isolated in oh, these times? I do, because part of my routine would be I would always meet up with a girlfriend of mine and we'd go to the gym. So I would try to, and that's very important for people who are working from home, is take an hour for yourself out of the day, whether you know it's your lunchtime or whenever you choose to do that, to do something for yourself because you can find yourself sitting in front of your computer for 12 hours a day and that's not healthy and like it's not helpful for anybody it's not healthy for your company it's not helpful for you so I miss that I miss having that 
get up, leave the house, go to the gym, meet up, talk about anything that's not work, and then come back and, you know, and get back to work and have that separation. So I have to sort of try to get away. I mean, that's the nice part about having Courtney home is I can get up and I can walk to, you know, into the kitchen and maybe have a conversation with her for a little while and then and then go back to work. And, and the thing oh, is I, that um, I, for those of us that work at home a lot, uh, if you were in an office, you'd be wasting a lot of time in the uh, – coffee room or the break room or you know wandering around and seeing somebody in the hall and gossiping when you're working at home you don't have that ongoing distraction Mm -hmm. so like you said you have to take a certain amount of time during the day and get out and do something whether it's go for a walk or do a a project that makes you happy something yeah just something that that walks you away from the, the screen I, I, it's funny, I do go into the office, you know, I try, was trying to do that once a quarter and maybe a little bit more, but um, when I go in, I don't get any work done. It's all chat, which is important. FaceTime is important to get, you know, that timing with people and they see you and talk with you and whatever, but, oh, there's no work that gets done. I come back and I have so much work I have to do once I get back into my home office. I'm like, oh boy, that was, you know, I hope that was worth it. <laughs> Yeah, I find I find that uh, you know when I run off to client meetings or travel, and I do a lot of that. Uh, even even though my home office is ba- my base, um, I get nothing done on a day of travel. Uh, you know, and I, if right. I'm going up to the Berkshires for a meeting, it's an hour drive up and an hour drive back in which nothing gets done. And here I'm able to condense my workload into a shorter amount of time and go out and walk. Walk. Yep. Yep, which is really important. So, uh, so Mimi, I want to thank you for joining us today. I hope that things get back to normal for all of us soon so that you can get back to the gym and I can get back to Starbucks and uh, <laughs> Courtney can go back to school and our lives all improve. But thanks for sharing your advice about working from home. Oh, well, great. Well, thanks for having me. It was really nice chatting with you. We're doing mm-hmm. a special program today called How Are We Doing, which is produced by Artsbeat uh, with the support <coughs> of uh, Westfield Technical Academy Studio 120 and my uh, producer, Peter Coles. I'm Mark Auerbeck. And one person that deserves a note of thanks is Ken Stomsky, who is a regular voice here on both 89.5 FM WSKB and Westfield Community Programming Channel 15, because the studio has been completely transformed over the course of the last couple of weeks since social distancing became the norm and school uh, shut down. All the clutter and all the boxes and everything have disappeared, and a lot of it is Ken's cleaning. And he working. is my Felix Unger, the Felix <laughs> Unger of um, community programming here, and we want to thank him. We have one more guest in this hour, somebody who is um, involved here at Westfield Technical Academy. Joe Douglas, he's an Emmy-nominated TV reporter who joined the staff here to teach broadcast TV and radio at Westfield Technical Academy. And part of the reason the studio exists is so his students get an opportunity to work on programs like I do, such as Artsbeat. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Mark. Uh, thanks for having me. It's well, uh, an exciting opportunity to talk about all this crazy stuff going on. Yeah, I mean, we pass each other in the halls here every once in a while, but we've never really had a chance to talk. Um, for your students, I know they're they're at home. Are th- are you teaching online with them? Well, I'm giving them some activities to do as we go forward. It's a little tough with them not having access to cameras. Uh, and other equipment that we use uh, pretty regularly at school, but there are definitely some activities I've given them. Like, for example, I gave them an assignment to uh, keep a video journal of what's going on uh, amidst this pandemic of social distancing and all the stuff that we're all going through. And I gave them an example of my own video journal entry, uh, which is just kind of a selfie video of me talking doing and I'm holding my daughter who's 21 months old and she's blabbing away and talking to the camera and I wanted them to keep it kind of a personal uh, video journal or diary uh, that maybe we can edit together or they can edit together later to make like a mini documentary about their lives this is such a huge 
uh, historical moment we're going through, all of us. Uh, and it, it can also function as kind of like a time capsule, potentially. Uh, with, and it's even just stuff like, you know, just documenting even simple things, not even just yourself, but images or, or things that you're going through in your life, uh, how your family's handling it, how maybe your pets are handling it, all those kinds of things. That's an, that's an assignment. Another assignment I just gave them uh, is, to, is to make a music video, which can be fun and kind of lighten things up. Um, and there's some tips and a tutorial on how to do that, uh, how to shoot it actually in basic, basic things on how to edit. Because the kids have mostly by now learned how to shoot at a very basic level and how to edit at a basic level. Uh, so those are some things, some of the activities I have for them. And then they're also just uh, opportunities to do just fun things. Anytime they see something fun or funny or interesting, they can uh, write about that or they can uh, they can make a video entry for it. Uh, it's just such a crazy time, and it's it's worth documenting, and it's also an opportunity for us to teach the kids something along the way. Joe, as a former uh, reporter and news anchor, this must be an a, a awesome time for you to observe what's going on. Yeah, I mean, you were a media person yourself, and, and so is Pete, so it's just we're all, you know, everybody's just kind of absorbing this whole situation, but it is an unbelievably huge story i think it may be like one of the biggest stories of all time i mean it's the whole world is going through this at once basically i mean we're in waves essentially because each you know countries have kind of had different uh they've had they've gone through this or they're at the end of it rather than where we are right now but yeah it's just an unbelievable story i mean there's so much impact you know so many people are at home and social distancing right now uh, and now we're starting to see more and more people get sick, which is scary, and we're hearing about uh, a lot of different things. And, uh, you know, as we go forward, I'm not going to speak to all the scientific aspects of it or the <clears throat> the actual data on the disease and stuff. I'll leave that to the professionals. But, yeah, it's certainly a, a, a gigantic story. The impact is unbelievable. And we're not seeing each other as much, which has a huge impact on people, like just in person. You know, just last night, I, I, we had a Zoom session with uh, my in-laws, and we played uh, Cards Against Humanity, you know, and like my, my mother-in-law lives in Israel, and uh, my, you know, my niece and nephew live in Arizona, and then uh, my other, my sister-in-law lives in New York. We're all on, on Zoom uh, online. Now, they all live apart, but we visit each other a lot, and, I, you know, I would be seeing folks, you know, friends and family more often in person, but it is just so unbelievably huge of an event um and just your own the thing is i think and i want the kids to understand is that your personal experience of this kind of event is historical um and it doesn't seem obvious sometimes to kids or even to just other to other people but i think as a news person and you guys might feel the same way because you're all media people too you know it, people forget that like how they experience something has or is relevant to what's happening and and, and has value uh, it's you know, like a time capsule or something like that. So, yeah, it's just so bizarre and scary and and interesting, too. And, and for me, it's a very difficult time. I mean, um, I generally cover the arts, and, and the arts are shut down. And so most of the stories I've done, either for print or radio, have been resources for out-of-work actors and musicians, where to go for help, or cancellations of seasons and how people are learning to adjust. I've written a lot um, of articles for a, a journal called uh, Succeeding in Small Business, which is an online entrepreneurial blog and newsletter on how to work from home. Home, you know, where to set up an office. These are not things I normally would cover. But as a cub reporter, I covered the AIDS pandemic in the early 1980s, which was my start, really, in radio. And yeah. um, in, in a similar time where um, we were being overrun with facts and misinformation and how did we as media cope. But Differently now, there is media 24-7 in so many varieties. I don't know how I would be able to be a frontline reporter right now and how I would be able to deal with the barrage of information and misinformation that's out there. Yeah, I mean, that is a, it's a really interesting topic. And uh, I think that, you know, social media is certainly uh, deserves a lot of criticism 
uh, for a lot of things. But one good thing that social media does is it does allow you as a reporter to communicate with people uh, in, in a wide variety of people and uh, and to get a feel for what's out there before it becomes like a news story. Um, so that's obviously there's a whole lot to unpack in what I just said in a way. But, but um, you know, it, yeah, right now uh, that's become – the main one of the main sources of communication uh for better or for worse because of social distancing um and i know a lot of my former colleagues uh are working from home and they're literally doing like live shots from their front yard or in their house sometimes because they're not supposed to be out and about talking to people face to face and they're doing skype and facetime interviews with people that are in town uh, because they're not, you know, they don't want to go and talk to them face to face and shoot a normal interview like you would under normal circumstances. So yeah, and then there's a lot to, um, and you guys are both media people and you understand this too. But you know, as a as a reporter, you often try to set up interviews and you 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 do a lot of work just trying to get people to talk to you formally for an interview. Uh, but you also, there's a lot of value in just canvassing. So, for example, if there's a shooting or if there's a fire, those are some basic spot news types of stories. You'll work the neighborhood. You'll knock on some doors. You'll start talking to people and get to know what, what really happened uh, or maybe you'll find out more about the victims or whoever. Uh, and all stories are not always as simple as a fire or a shooting, which is, I mean, it's, it, those are terrible stories, but they're often kind of a simple story to cover. But it's that canvassing and that going out and interacting or maybe, you know, going to a city council meeting and talking to people there uh, and who just might randomly be there. That's going to be lost right now because you're not you're not having that just random interaction. And there's a lot to be said for that kind of stuff. Uh, but that does happen to a significant degree online. And now we're seeing people kind of uh, there's there's kind of a been a change in how people interact online with zoom and video conferencing and stuff like that uh, where you're seeing people engage and look for that face-to-face -face contact or at least the closest approximation to it through online mechanisms that's going to have a radical change and there's just i mean you know you walk around uh downtown areas are just kind of ghost towns uh all the business i was just walking i live in northampton all of the businesses just like they are probably in westfield they're all closed they'll have signs up saying you know they were put up in mid-march saying, oh, we're going to be closed for two weeks, and here we are beyond two weeks, and they're still closed. So it's just a really I, unprecedented and bizarre situation. Definitely. I can't think of anything else. Definitely. Like we're out of time, Joe, and I want to thank you for joining us. Joe Douglas, who is a broadcast TV and radio teacher here at Westfield Technical Academy, and before he came to Westfield, an Emmy-nominated television reporter – coast to coast. Um, this is the end of our first segment of a special program called How Are We Doing? I'm Mark Auerbach from Artsbeat Radio and TV. Peter Coles has been our chief engineer today. We want to thank the people from Westfield Technical Academy, and this program will be broadcast at 89.5 FM WSKB and at Westfield Community Programming Channel 15. We're going to leave you today with a little music. It's called As We Stumble Along. It's an anthem from the Drowsy Chaperone. Thanks for joining us. As we stumble along on life's funny journey As we stumble along into the blue We look here and we look there Seeking answers anywhere Never sure of where to turn Or what to do Still we bumble our way Through life's crazy labyrinth Barely knowing left from right Nor right from wrong And the best that we can do is hope a bluebird will sing his song as we stumble along. It's a dismal little world in which we live. It can bore you till you've nothing left to give. Seven overrated wonders, seven underwhelming seas. 
Six excruciating continents? Antarctica. Oh, please. Still, you mustn't let it lick you. This planet, oh, so bland. Keep your eyeball on the highball in your hand. As we stumble along, cross life's crowded dance floors. As we push and we shove, we live and we learn. And when we finally leave the bar, and we see that morning star We pull our bootstraps up And homeward turn Then we stumble away Through dawn's blinding sunbeams Barely glowing right from right No left from wrong But as long as we can hear